I love my retro handhelds like the Mayu Mini Plus and the RGB30, but when you got something like this already in your pocket, doesn't it make sense to play games on it too? And I've been waiting a long time to be able to play retro games like the ones that play on this on an iPhone without the hassle of jailbreaking or side loading or all kinds of crazy stuff that I've done over the years. It works, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. You just want something that's super easy, very low barrier to entry, and it just works. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the Delta app. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. Today, like I said, we're going to be talking about the Delta app. And this is an app that is on the iOS store right now as we speak. And it is free to download. And it is an emulator that runs several different retro consoles. It's easy to use. It's easy to set up. We're going to go through a little bit of that here today. Now, does this mean I'm going to stop using these things? Absolutely not. These things are great uh, as far as form factor goes, as far as buttons and controls goes. Uh, functionality. They're still probably the number one way to play retro games in a handheld fashion, but sometimes if you just got this in your pocket already and you load a couple games on it and you played in the grocery store when you're waiting to check out or at the bus stop or something like that, it's just easy, right? No extra hardware. If you're going to be playing a lot of games, yeah, grab one of these, stick it in your pocket, have some fun. But if you just want to play something spur of the moment on the phone you already got, this is what we're going to do today. So here it is, like I said, it's right in the Apple Store right now, the iOS Store, free to download. It's getting some great reviews already. It is the Delta Game Emulator, and this is a result of some of the laws that are changing with what Apple allows to be loaded onto your iPhone. So I'm excited to see what happens with even more developers getting into the game. But for right now, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. So when we load the Delta app here, I'm already in a game, so I'm going to get out of that. And in the main menu, you have an option of loading games on here. So obviously it comes with nothing to start with. You're going to hit your plus sign. You're going to be able to load that thing from either iTunes, which is the old-fashioned way, I think, of just hooking up a USB cable and using iTunes. But files is going to be the easiest way to do it. And when you go into your files app, then it's just like anything else that you're loading into your uh, files app. You can go right from your iCloud drive. Just grab a file, grab a folder, whatever you want to do, open it up, and it does some automatic kind of categorizing for you. For some reason, I, I might have messed something up, but for some reason, it put kind of my Game Boy and Game Boy Colors into a folder called Game Boy Color. That's fine. It recognized all the NES games and threw them in its own little folder called NES, and then I've got Super Nintendo and a couple uh, that's back to Game Boy Color again. So I just loaded a couple... Uh, test files here just to try it out and let's go ahead and go back into Clax here. Now you notice that I was playing this game when we started and one of the neat features is it says do you want to resume or do you want to restart? So if you hit restart obviously it'd be like if I just turned off the console and turned it back on again. Uh, if I hit resume it's just going to go right back. Now in addition to being able to resume once we go into the menu menu here so you see it's got an on-screen display to start with by default. If you go into menu, you have options of both saving states and loading states. So what I just did going back into this game and resuming had nothing to do with the save state. It was something that auto-saves when you go out to the main menu. So any game that you go out of, it's going to save that state for you, kind of as like a, an auto-save. But if you are playing the game and you want to have a definite place that you have auto or saved a state, then you can do that as well. So like I said, we've got the on-screen uh, controls here, and this time I hit restart. And there is haptic feedback on all the buttons and the controls, and you can turn those on and off individually in the settings app of this program. You can turn the haptic controls just for the buttons or just for your controller or you know, either or both, but it feels pretty good as far as like on-screen controls, but spoiler alert, we're going to go ahead and hook a controller up to this anyways, but for games like this, where it's just left, right, push a button, you know, not a lot of constant running or something like that, you know, puzzle games, RPGs, 
you know, it's going to be perfectly fine for, for this, for the on-screen controls. So if I go ahead and take this and just rotate it this way, you can see I've got landscape controls just automatically configured. And for all your consoles, it has kind of these controller, uh, you know, faces here already configured for you. But there's also an option of going in and downloading them, downloading different ones. So you can change how this looks, and you can change it both in landscape and in portrait. So depending on the type of game that you're playing, depending on the ergonomics of how you want to play, maybe some games work better like this, maybe some games work better like this. So let's go ahead and back out of this again, and go back to the main menu. Let's go ahead and load up like a Super Nintendo game. So we'll go into Mario World here, and just see how good this screen looks. I mean, we know the iPhone screen is already a beautiful screen, and it's doing a great job with these games also. Now, it's not perfect. There is going to be some problems with uh, games as far as, like, the orientation, and you can't change any of the uh, aspect ratios or anything in this particular program yet. I'm hoping that the developers add something like that, being able to change either uh, overlays you know, filters or aspect ratios would be pretty freaking awesome. So again, we've got the controls that can be both in landscape and portrait. In this case, you can see how it puts some of the buttons on top of the screen. That's not ideal. You can change the opacity of these in the menu options also. You can take the opacity way down so you hardly see it. Or if you don't want to see it at all, obviously just bring it back into portrait mode. Now, a game like this may not be as perfect with a on-screen display, especially if you're going to have to hold down a run button and jump. You know, that's just not going to work too well. But there is an option in the menu here to hold button. And you can press that, and you can tell one of the buttons on the display to be constantly held. And then you could do it that way. Now, that's not going to be perfect for every game, but maybe there's certain games that you would want to do that with. But it's nice to have the option, at least. Speaking of options, if we go up into the settings app, I've talked about that a couple times. We've got some controller settings. We've got the skins. Like I said, we can change out these skins. These are the ones that come with it. And then you can download more from a website. Here's that controller opacity where you can change that and some other options as far as like respecting silent mode. Here's the haptic feedback settings. And then there is a sync function where if you have multiple devices, you can go ahead and sync your game save states and all your data and cheats and everything so that you don't have to load everything up on every single device that you got. Once you set them up and log into them, it just syncs all that for you. So like I said, this is pretty cool, it's pretty easy to use, but right now I want to showcase using the same thing, but with a controller hooked up. Alright, so here I have this iPhone now loaded into this Razer Kishi uh, version 2, and this is very similar to a, a Backbone, the Backbone would work just as well. This is a lightning connector controller, so it's not Bluetooth, it's just connected right into it, and it just works. Um, we're going to show that in just a second, but also you could hook up a Bluetooth controller and you could have this you know just prop the phone up on on the desk or something and have a Bluetooth controller maybe a Xbox controller or a PS4 or PS5 and you could use that as well so let's go ahead and go back into this game and we'll resume and it crashed hey that that happens right <laughs> so now we're back into this and we're in you know landscape mode and now there's no on-screen displays. I didn't have to do anything once I hooked up the controller. It just knew, hey, that's it's got a controller now. We don't have to put the on-screen controls on it anymore. So now when we go back into the game, we obviously have better controls. A little bit easier than on-screen. And uh, this is a great experience right here. Now obviously I'm kind of contorted to get this in front of the camera. But pick your favorite controller. Hook it up to the iPhone. And it's just going to work. Now if you have some buttons that just don't happen to work, we can go into the settings. Back in the main menu again. And we can customize the controls here. It recognizes the controller automatically. And if we customize the controls, you can see we can go ahead and change 
any of these buttons. Maybe I don't want A and B to be A and B. I want it to be maybe X and Y. I could change that. And it's going to remember that for as long as you have this controller on. If you start pairing up different controllers, it may get uh, a little confused. But as far as like if you take this off and put it back on, it's going to remember the controls that you set up here. So for simple games like NES, SNES, and Game Boy and stuff like that, not a problem. When you get into something like Nintendo 64 that had some kind of weird controls to it, then you may want to go ahead and do this to get it set up correctly. But that's really it. I just wanted to show you a quick rundown of this program. Uh, just hit the App Store a couple days ago. Go ahead and grab it. You never know when these things are going to disappear for whatever reason. There's been some other emulators loaded up into the store, and they've disappeared already. Um, this one seems to work pretty darn good. So go ahead and grab it and play around with it. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I appreciate you watching as always. Let me know what questions you have. Throw them down in the comments below. Let me know what game you're going to load up on this thing and take it for a test drive. So if you got something out of this video, I appreciate the thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff, more geeky stuff, go ahead and check out the rest of the channel and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be playing with this app more and more and testing it out with different configurations. So if you want to see more, check back to often. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.